Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick and we're playing Stationers. Now last time we were here we pressurised our base and made ourselves an atmosphere that we can breathe. So having the base sealed is nice for pressurising but it means we've created ourselves a little greenhouse here. So now we're going to have to look at temperature. Now we're going to start with some basic tricks you can use early game in a small room and we'll work our way up to temperature control on a larger base like this one here. So, with no further ado, let's get building. So here we are at our newly built starter base. Now it is just a single room, and as you can see we've pressurised it, which is a wee bit cold at the moment. We're not going to grow any plants in that. So, there are a couple of easy ways to deal with that. Uh, so number one would be to just pressurise your base during the day when it's a bit warmer, or that, but that won't really do much good for you on Europa. Uh, two, you can just wait for the sun to warm the place up. It is a greenhouse after all, and it will warm up of its own accord. Oh, the easy way there is what you've probably seen a lot of people to do is to just drop, drop a couple of flares. They will warm the place up. They'll take a little while, but they'll do the job for you. And that is by far the quickest and cheapest way of doing it. When the place is warm, you just throw the flares outside. Right, another option we have available to us is just our good old wall heater. That one you just put in, plug into electricity and away it goes. Now that one does have the drawback as it will consume a lot of power. Now if we switch it on, we can grab our configuration device, have a look at it and we'll see it's drawing up to a thousand watts. Now early game yeah, it'll heat the room, but you might not have the 1,000 watts to spare on that one there. So, it's alright to keep the room warm once it's warm. It'll only switch on for a little while and switch it back off again. But when you're trying to heat the room for the first time, especially on something like Europa, you might want to use the flare trick just to get it up to temperature and then try to switch over to the heater. But as always, we don't want to be sitting here switching the thing on and off whenever the temperature gets too low. So we're going to want a bit of automation on that one. So we shall need our atmospheric, atmospheric sensor. We shall need a reader to read the atmospheric sensor. We shall want a compare unit. to compare it to a temperature we want it to set at. And of course we'll need a writer now to write it back to the heater. Now, if we want to read in the gas sensor and the temperature. It's reading in Kelvin 275, that's about it. So we want to compare it. So we want when we're switching it on, we want to ask ourselves when do we want it to come on. So when do we want this to return a true value to write to the heater? So we want the heater to come on whenever the temperature is below, we'll say 290 Kelvin, which is 17 degrees. Uh, so 100. So 17 degrees. So we want to read the reader memory and when it is less than 20, 17 degrees we switch it on. It is less than 17 degrees so we want it on. So our logic compares the only one connected we are connecting to the wall heater at the value of on. So if I switch this off it should switch on. There we go. Our heater is now automated whenever the temperature falls below 17 degrees the temperature the heater will come on. So that's okay when you're running too cold. That won't last forever because once that gets to 17, now the sun's out, this room is going to warm up quite a bit. So we're going to have to look at cooling. Now we have a few options available to us for cooling. Uh, first and obvious one is the counterpart to our wall, wall heater there, which is our wall cooler. So, Hook him up, pop him down there. Now we have to have a coolant pipe attached to these ones there. So we shall just run some pipes outside. There we 
go. Three should be plenty. And that's all we need. Now when we first switch the cooler on, we'll notice that it doesn't work. because We have to actually put some refrigerant gas into the pipe. Now the pollutant is the best, best gas to use. Uh, water is another very good one to use, but it will operate on any gas. Which is fortunate for us because what we have here at the moment, abundant supply is any old gas. Now easy way to pressurise the pipe. So we'll just get rid of him for a moment. We can just grab an active vent. Put him in. Switch him on for a little bit. I have a Mega Pascal. That should be heaps. You've done your job. Put him back. Back goes the wall heater. And now it's quite happy. Now as with the wall heater, we don't want to have to sit here and babysit it and look after it and tell it when to come on and off. We'd like to automate that. Now as we've automated the heater, we can use essentially the same circuit just to compare a temperature and automate the cooler as well. Like that. Now we've just reused our logic reader. We pull another cable in into the new compare unit. Once again we want to ask it when do we want the cooler to turn on. And we want the cooler to turn on when the temperature is greater than Let's say 27, so that'll be 300 Kelvin. So, temperature in is your logic reader. Compare it to the memory. So, when it is greater than 27, it switches on. Currently not greater than 27, so it's reading a zero. And we want to write that back to the wall cooler with the on setting. And it stays off. We're all good. So when the temperature hits 27, wall cooler should automatically come on for us. When it drops below 27, it should switch off. You can see the temperature's got above 17, so our wall heater has switched off as it was designed to do. So here we are a bit later. See the temperature's rising just from the sun coming in from outside. As the temperature rises up to 27, we'll see the wall cooler switch on. There it is. Just switch it on for a few seconds. It's only drawing 100 watts. So that is quite a cheap, cheap way power-wise to maintain the coolness of your base. Um, but I mean, that's still an active way of doing it. Requires the controls and still does cost you a little bit of power. There are other alternatives we still have available to us. So to say these are active controls, we can also use passive controls. So, a passive control is one which basically doesn't have any moving parts. Essentially, all it is would be if we put a pipe going to the outside. Uh, and then just place some radiators on the inside and outside. So it connects the inside to the outside just allows some thermal, because it's colder outside, it'll just allow some of the heat inside, outside of course, we'll need to pressurise those pipes, so we can just use our same pressurised station technique that we used before, by pinching one of the active vents, and wire it up. Switch it on. That should be enough. And we're good to go. And there you have it. Now that this is pressurised, the radiators will take heat from the inside 
and transfer it to the outside as it's colder outside the heat will flow to the colder colder area now this will provide just a small amount of cooling which should reduce your need for the active cooling from the cooler here so you want it but I like to get just a, just enough balance so that when you've got this going the heat is very slowly going up so it only requires a, an occasional click on of the of the cooler every now and then so that way you get all the free cooling from there plus a little bit of active cooling just to control it now if you find that your passive system has got too much cooling abilities or not enough it's just simply a matter of either removing or adding extra radiators from the system now this works on Mars quite nicely when your temperature difference from outside and inside is relatively small but if you're on somewhere like Europa where you have very cold outside you'll find even with a single panel this is going to freeze your base very quickly so you can still use it the only difference being you might want to have it so you can switch it on and off occasionally so when you want a little bit of cooling you are probably only got to flick it on for a second or two and that will provide all the cooling you need but once again if you don't want to manually regulate it you can just replace that one with your digital valve now the digital valve will respond to the same on off command that the heater does so you can use this exact same uh, control circuit for flicking on and off the uh, digital valve and that will give you a fully automated passive cooling system in there so what we have here is our basic systems for heating and cooling a relatively small base when you've just got a single room and not much more else going on there but what happens once you've got a bigger base you're going to need something with a little bit more grunt in it to actually control the temperature because a large base with lots of windows will pick up a lot of heat so we're going to have to look at some bigger systems uh, but not today that's about all we've got time for today so till next time happy building see ya Yeah, uh, looks like the potato problem from last week might have clogged the plumbing. Yeah, well, better clean that up, I guess. Um, <laughs> just what I need. Um, maybe the heavy drill. Yeah, heavy drill. Ooh. Ah, close enough. As I say, NASA. <laughs> could go wrong. Um, pull the pin, open the door, throw it in. Temperature high. Oh shit.